We all know that both viruses and bacteria can make us sick. We've heard of a viral infection or even a bacterial infection. But what is the difference between a virus and a bacteria? How do they differ between how they cause infection and how they can be treated? In today's video, we are going to cover just that. Stay tuned to learn more about viruses versus bacteria, how they can make us sick, and how we can treat them if possible. and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. I am so glad you are here to learn more about how your health and your body works. If you want to continue to learn more about your health, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for your support. A disclaimer, the doctor in my name comes from the PhD I earned. I am not a medical doctor. My videos and content are for educational and informational purposes only. This is not to be used in lieu of medical advice, but to educate you. If you have a true medical emergency or issue, please see your physician. Both viruses and bacteria are considered microorganisms, which means you cannot see an individual virus or bacteria without the use of a microscope. They are invisible to the naked eye. They are so small that it is easy for them to gain access to the body. And both viruses and bacteria have the ability to make you sick. So what is different about them and how they function? Bacteria are single-celled organisms that contain DNA, which is their genetic material. They can grow and develop on their own, and because they are made of only one cell, they can replicate very quickly. It's actually called exponential growth. Many bacteria cannot harm us. Some are even good for us, but there are a few of them that are referred to as pathogenic. As when they do come into our bodies, that is when we feel sick. They are able to reproduce and grow in our environment. But why do we feel sick when certain bacteria enter into the body? This is because as they grow and reproduce, they secrete a variety of toxins from their cells. These toxins build up in our bodies and make us feel unwell. Antibiotics are actually very effective against bacteria. They target different parts of the bacteria themselves to stop them from growing and reproducing altogether. This is possible because bacteria cells are not like our cells at all. The antibiotics target things like the bacteria cell wall that are very specific to the bacteria and not specific to our own cells. So we can target the bacteria killing off the bacteria and not target our own cells, which would be very bad. However, when taking an antibiotic, it is very important to take the entire dose you are prescribed for the amount of time you are prescribed it. There is a growing amount of bacteria that are becoming antibiotic resistant, which is not good, as the number of people are not taking their antibiotics properly. To see more on this topic, see my video on antibiotic resistant. Bacteria can cause infections like strep throat, tuberculosis, and urinary infections, just to name a few. Viruses are even smaller than bacteria. While bacteria can live on their own, viruses require a host cell in order to live. This means out in the open, in the air, or on a table, for instance, viruses don't live very long. Some are actually hardier than others and can live for several hours, while most viruses only live for several minutes without a host. This is why there is a huge debate as to whether viruses are living or non-living. A virus uses its host mechanisms in order to make more of itself. That means a virus on its own cannot replicate. So when a virus comes into the body, it finds a host cell, 
It injects its genetic material into it, which in, a, in the case of a virus can be either DNA or RNA. And then it puts the host cells mechanisms to work to make more of itself. Once the host cell is full of these new viruses, it bursts open in a process called lysis. This releases more viruses out into a person's body. Now that there are more viruses, these viruses can then go on and infect other cells, put in their genetic material into the cells, creating more viruses and so on and so forth. This increases the viral load in the body. This is why there is a longer incubation period for a viral infection. The incubation period is the period from the time the virus came into the body until the time you actually feel sick. During that incubation period, the virus is replicating and replicating and replicating. With bacteria, they can replicate very quickly, so you start to feel unwell really quickly, maybe even within a few hours. However, with viruses, it can take a few days or even a week for the viral load to be high enough for you to feel sick. Some diseases caused by viruses include the common cold, chicken pox, and AIDS, just to name a few. There is no medical cure for a virus. Sometimes antivirals can be given within the early days of the virus infection to help with the symptoms to not get so bad. However, you have to catch it early within the first two to three days, and you also have to know that you have a virus. For example, you tested positive for the flu. The unfortunate part about taking these antivirals is that there are side effects that can happen with these, um, so you have to weigh the good with the bad. Because of the mechanism of the virus, vaccinations can be made to prevent viral infections. Remember before I said that viruses could either be DNA or RNA viruses? This means that their genetic material is either DNA or RNA. You can take a look at my videos, what is DNA and what is mRNA, to find the difference between those two different genetic materials. I'll put the link to those videos in the description box below. Fun fact, DNA viruses can actually incorporate into the host cell's genome. This is why viruses such as chickenpox can come back later as shingles or herpes viruses can come and go. Let's get back to RNA viruses, which tend to mutate much more, making it more difficult to make an effective, long-lasting vaccine against them while DNA viruses tend to be more stable. Most vaccines we have available that are effective against viruses and have minimized disease spread and even eradicated some are vaccines against DNA viruses. There are even vaccines against some of the more harmful bacteria, such as tetanus, diphtheria, pneumococcal, and meningococcal bacteria. These bacteria can cause severe disease and death. In summary, Bacterial infections are caused by bacteria, where viral infections are caused by viruses. Some bacteria can be good, while others can be pathogenic. Bacteria have DNA as their genetic material, whereas viruses can have either DNA or RNA as their genetic material. Bacteria are going to divide again and again by themselves. Their disease is caused by the toxin that they produce. Whereas viruses infect by infecting a host cell and using that host cell's genome to make more of itself. Antibiotics can be used against bacteria, but antibiotics cannot be used against viruses. There are vaccinations that are possible for some of them. They both also have similar transmission routes and they both have similar prevention measures. Practicing good hygiene, washing your hands, and making sure that if you're not feeling well, you're not going out. I hope that this video helped you to better understand the differences between bacteria and viruses. This was a overview of the differences between the two. There is so much more on this topic 
and you probably are left with a few questions. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them down in the comment box below. I could definitely make a whole slew of different videos. We can talk more about the specific mechanisms and how they cause disease. Um, this was really just to give you an overview, a bigger understanding of how bacteria and viruses are different. So again, if you have any questions, comments, wanna see a different video, make sure that you pop that down in the comment section below. As always, if you like this video and enjoy my content, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button so that you never miss out on a new video. Thank you.